Hi everyone, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, here we are again. We are doing an episode today on the suggestion of one of our subscribers and it's on Judith Lieber. For me, looking at luxury items, Lieber definitely is a luxury item. She picks these beautiful skins to work with, beautiful satins, and the interior of her purses are just as lovely as the exterior. I think she single-handedly exploded the Swarovski crystal industry because her whimsical purses are covered, they're paved with Swarovski crystal. Lieber's purses retail new in several thousand, you know, 2,500 up to 5,500 on average. You have to look at these pieces, they're really beautiful. She also makes belts and her history, her background is quite fascinating. She was living in Hungary and her father was quite successful and wealthy. She managed to escape the concentration camps she met her husband in Europe, who was an American military person, and the two of them emigrated to the United States. He was an artist, and in my world of perfect relationships, this is, I'm projecting my wishful thinking, both of them uh, being artists, they fed each other. It was truly a love story. They were together over 60 years, and remarkably, Judith Lieber passed away several hours after her husband did of a heart attack. So talk about an incredible connection. My appreciation for Lieber was elevated when I had the good fortune of being in New York during the time that the Museum of Art and Design in Columbus Circle had an exhibition on her. Her vision of what to transform into a purse I mean, she, nobody will ever be able to come close to her. We've had a few other purse designers like Catherine Bauman here in Los Angeles who emulates Lieber in her purse designs. We pulled a few of the more iconic purses. I don't have a lot because they sell pretty quickly. Her Fabergé egg is one that people are well familiar with. It's completely covered with flat back Swarovski crystals. These purses are collectible. Some people have dozens and dozens of Lieber purses. And if you look at how perfectly placed the crystals are, it's, it's laborious work. So it's understandable how expensive her pieces are on the retail market. She's also known for using exotic skins and her purse frames are cast in Italy, I believe, out of brass. She sets semi-precious stones in the frames or uh, marcasites, and most of her purses come equipped with uh, necessary accoutrements for women, a comb and a mirror and a dust bag. Over the years, I've had the good fortune of having many different types of Lieber bags. Uh, this one is a little unusual because it looks like it's stenciled uh, suede and with onyx uh, in the flip frame. And this one has what I was talking about earlier, her comb. And what's beautiful is these designs, many of them were made before cell phones were popular and they're typically big enough uh, for us to throw our cell phone in. This one's unusual because it's applique leather on satin with the uh, colors used in this. It's a purse that can be used pretty much for anything. So we included on the table a few purses that are not Lieber that are reminiscent of her style and her use of hardware. This one in particular is pretty spectacular. It's a uh, 1940s Nettie Rosenstein with this really dramatic coat of arm uh, metal on it. And it's, um, it's a flip up clutch. And uh, Nettie Rosenstein's purses, costume jewelry and clothing are highly collectible. This fabulous little thing 
is um, for lipstick, and it has her signature on the metal. And then this little itsy bitsy teeny weeny thing is what's called a necessaire. Uh, it's 1920s. It's a uh, base metal with enamel disc of a swan. And why is it called a necessaire? Because it has compartments for whatever's necessary for lipstick, for blush, for coins, for telephone call, a mirror. And I don't know what this space would be for. There are many different versions of necessaires from the 20s through the 60s. And then this clutch is 60s, lucite, very space age. And then, of course, a metal, uh, completely metal evening bag, which technically is the base of the Austrian crystal purses. She usually used brass as a base, so this would not be lever. And I love her belt designs because her buckles are pretty fabulous. She created the designs on these things so that it's adjustable. So you can actually change the size of this belt just by sliding. Her eye for design is pretty fabulous. So we just have a couple of belts here, for example. Many contemporary designers um, are inspired by Lieber. I mean, even some vintage designers like Alexis Kirk would create belts and buckles that are reminiscent of the Lieber style. But today, Lieber's purses are a staple amongst the A-list um, celebrities because they go with pretty much everything. Lieber's business, even though she's passed away, uh, still uh, is uh, successful and thriving. They tend to collaborate with contemporary designers, like in the film Hustlers. Uh, there was a collaboration with Alexander Wang, and the purse that was used in that film is highly sought after and really collectible. If you're going to spend your money, you might as well buy quality because it'll hold its value. The Lieber purses definitely, especially the Swarovski crystal uh, whimsical ones, are much sought after and uh, competitive bidding in auctions. So you can enjoy what you've spent your money on and know that it's going to hold its value. There are very few things you can say that about. We love your suggestions, so thank you for suggesting a, an episode on Lieber. And as always, if you like this episode, please give us a like. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe. Um, and we are obviously making every effort to provide different content once a week. We're grateful for your interest, and we look forward to seeing you in the store sometime in the not-so-distant future. Oh, and know that we have a uh, presence on Instagram. We have a lot of these items on our website. So that's it for now. Be well, be safe, be healthy, and we'll see you next week.